Okay, perfect. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. In this session, I will show you the process I use to create kind of like a camping canteen. And as an industrial designer, one of the first tasks you should always do, in general, if you're a designer, uh, try to do a little bit of research. So for example, here, there's just a quick overview of different uh, bottles I found, particularly if you're new to designing, it's always very tempting to in instantly start doing something. But sometimes it's very rewarding to step back, take a look at what we have and explore those. So for example, I, as you can see, a lower left corner, I created some notes, for example, about uh, the sleeve, fluid window, two simple shapes, et cetera. So whatever you can see. And then on the right side, I started, based on what I observed, playing with lines and creating designs. And on top left corner, then there you see, that's actually then a final design, which I developed through looking at these images, playing with these sketches, and then finalizing to this. This, for example, always will help you a lot when you go into Shaper 3D. As a quick introduction about the, the process again, you see here on the left side, I also did some very basic um, three-dimensional models just to explore proportions, shapes, and then step by step, I started to add more details in via copy and paste then work myself towards the final design on the right side. Okay, so let's get started. I will make a new sketch. First thing we would like to do is to set up our environment. So with my finger, I tap onto the view cube upper right corner. We can go to the front view. Let's go to units and make sure you're in millimeters. Uh, a camping canteen is a smaller object, so millimeters is the perfect unit system. Then we can zoom in or zoom out a little bit. Pay attention to the grids you see uh, under the view uh, cube that kind of like can give you an idea about scale. And let's create our first line. With the pencil, I will draw actually a line straight up from the center, so I try to work with the grid. In case you do not have the grid actually turned on, you can go to the lower right corner and uh, click on the magnet icon and turn on snap sketch to grid. This is actually very, very useful. Okay, so let's with two fingers pinch into the line with the pencil selected. Because I know that this one should be around 190 millimeters, so I will select the number and then type in 190 and press enter. Before I continue, a little tip. I would like this line to always be vertical, so I select it with the pencil. And then on the left side, you see all the sketch constraints. and particular constraints which are usable will be, will be highlighted. The rest will be ghosted out and I will select horizontal vertical. To prevent the sketch, for example, to move like this, I don't want that, I want it to stay on the grid. I will select this lower point and then I can either uh, tap onto the lock icon right above the point or select the lock constraint in the menu on the left. Perfect. So now, for example, if I try to drag actually this point, you see it doesn't work. This helps you really to prevent your sketches to deform in unexpected ways. I, to develop this um, vessel, I actually used a plastic water bottle as a size reference. And I know it's roughly 65 uh, millimeters wide. Because we will create a bottle, which is a revolve object, we only need to work with half of the profile. So two fingers, we can zoom in. And then either left or right, based on your preference, you can draw another line. Select the line, we make this one horizontal. Select the line, and this should be 32 
0.25. Also the file which I'm creating here later will be shared with you so you can actually look into all the different steps I took. Okay, good. We, for example, can create a line up. I don't really know yet how how tall and what angle that line should be, which is why I actually um, just keep it there. And this is also one of the reasons why currently I do not have auto constraint turned on. I didn't introduce this before. For one moment, I keep this on. With auto constraint, if I draw a horizontal line, you will see that line will be horizontal by being constrained 90 degree or perpendicular to the right line. And I can draw a line down. If I select this one, okay. I want this one to be uh, vertical. We can also, for example, clean up the type of constraints being used, just as a tip based on your preference. I remove this one and I simply replace it with a horizontal one. That's the way how I, for example, like to work currently. These lines all should be horizontal or vertical. Let's add some dimensions. This can be 12 so that the overall diameter will be 24 and this may be 25. Oh, it is perfect, good. And let's draw one last line and you will see when I connect these two endpoints with a line, the sketch is closed and is filled. So we need this blue face, the profile, to actually create a three-dimensional object. So at this point, I actually would not continue refining the sketch too much, um, but maybe play around with the basic proportions. And because Shaper uh, uses direct modeling as the approach, we can very easily make a revolve object, move it to the side, uh, adjust the sketch, move it to the, and then make a new object, move everything to the side. So we can use kind of like our workspace as a whiteboard. So I selected tools on the left side. Let's select revolve. And then upper uh, middle area, you see a small dialog saying select faces or closed sketch faces to revolve. So with the pencil, I select that face, then I tap next. I select the axis to revolve around. This is like wood turning. So I will select the right edge that's vertical and tap OK or done. Perfect. No, because the object and the sketch overlay, and I would like to make multiples, I want to move this body to the right. So we can go to translate. We could, for example, then select translate, double tap onto a face, so it selects a whole object. Tip next. And then here I use the grid from the left to the right, 100 millimeters to move everything over. So what you saw right now uh, is actually one big tip already I can give you, really make use of the grid and establish um, a pattern how you move objects. So I, for example, in this design would always move everything 100 millimeters left or right. So this way I know when elements overlap like threading or a cap on a bottle, they are all perfectly centered. So it's a little bit, uh, um, easier on your mind. So let's select maybe this point and I would like to see, well, how does this, for example, look like if I adjust this point, then let's make another revolve there and there. And let's go to translate, double tap, double tap, next. And basically I pick the same distance again and move it over. And you see now I have two objects. I can, for example, compare. Maybe this line is too long, so select this one and move it up maybe a little bit to there. Because I have the grid also turned on, um, it always snaps to the grid, so I turn the grid off. Maybe zoom in a little bit, and now I'm a little bit freer in manipulating the angle. Okay, 
So let's make another revolve object there. Okay, good. And let's say that body does not look too bad. Oh, did I, oh, done. Translate. Um, oh, I see. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Um, I had the grid turned off. There and then there to there. There. Okay, good. Mm, I'm not necessarily sure if maybe the opening of the bottle is wide enough. Let's say this is for camping needs. So I want to get liquid quickly in and quickly out. So there are two ways how I could explore this with this um, last model I made. I could, for example, go to the sketch and then here say, mm, make this one 14. Now you see by adjusting actually this number, only this line actually will be adjusted and the rest follows it. And that is done because the sketch is constrained. I have this point locked because uh, this way the sketch can't move around. Then all these lines uh, I selected and the top one, they are set to be horizontal or vertical. They also have different lengths. For example, this one has a length associated to it. So this way it's, uh, it makes it very easy for the software to adjust the sketch uh, only where we want. And then the rest will, for example, not be adjusted. Okay, so let's say maybe 18 millimeters. Then we could make another revolve. Okay. Now if you consider uh, drinking out of this one, this is actually very, uh, probably the opening's bigger so you can get the fluid out better. So maybe this might actually be a better design. Okay, good. So. Now I have all these objects. What do I do with it? Let's take a look at groups. I have all these groups um, or all these objects inside this one group. Let's create a new group. Swipe to the left, rename, and maybe select this as ideas. And to this group, I would like to add these three objects. And then I can hide this one and it's gone. Perfect. Okay. And maybe here, this one I, re I rename and call it for the moment simply bottle. So with this established, we can maybe turn the sketch, uh, sorry, turn the sketch on by hiding the object group because now we have to add, for example, the design for the cap. If we zoom in a little bit more, you see then you can see uh, the grid gets finer and finer, which makes it very easy to continue working. So I would like to create a nice cap. I draw a line there and maybe a horizontal line this way. And I draw a line there. So this one should be horizontal. This one should be vertical. And I would like to have these two lines to be, for the moment, let's say two millimeters of a distance. And also this line and this line, there I select the endpoints, two millimeters. And if you take a look under um, absolute, and if I tap the middle one, it says horizontal. If I tap this one, vertical, this is actually basically telling you uh, the distance should be absolute or the distance should be only horizontal or vertical. In my case, it should be horizontal. So two, okay, and there we are, perfect. There you see how this actually works. So two millimeters uh, I selected also because the cap needs to have a little bit of wiggle room and we need to put the threading inside. Now the next step would be, we could from here draw a line to the left, draw maybe a line up 
and make a connection. This one I will decide being horizontal, vertical, and vertical. And now this one I can just move up and down to play it a little bit with the proportion. And also here, make this one two. Perfect. Okay. Before I continue, also here again, maybe let's do a revolve to see how everything looks. And um, by accident, I had the ideas group turned on. So you see I created uh, this cap and then that cap was added to the ideas group. It's not a big deal. I would like this one to be band models. So I could to the left of the eye icon, click on this folder icon, then select that body, select done, and that was it. Okay, so I moved it together. So the reason why um, I did this is basically everything is on in one group, it's easier to navigate. And now, for example, with this face selected, I could click transform and move. And maybe move this one up or move it down. And this way I can easily play already with the, interactively with the proportion. Or I define this one via the sketch. Okay, double tap on the grid. So I'm back into orthographic front view. Okay. So the, the cap will at one point have, for example, an opening where the finger goes through and also from the side, it will be cut a little bit. Could actually also create a group and simply call this one cap and move this one to there. With a finger pressed on the folder and hold it, you see then you can move those around. So this way you can very easily structure your design and show and hide objects that are important. Maybe I will try to do it this way, one line. Then uh, from here, I draw a line down, press, uh, press and terminate this point uh, on this line. And now I would like this arc to um, be replicated on the right side. So I could, for example, draw a line again, do basically the same thing like this. And then I could use the symmetry commands, for example, to make sure that these points are always exactly left and right equally the same. And you saw the way how I did this is well, like I selected left and right and then I select symmetry and then I select an axis line. So that works actually pretty good. Um, the two arcs or the splines are not necessarily tangent to each other at the lower points. So I could also select these two Splines and then select tangent, and there they are. And if I move this point because we work with symmetry, and you see the other side works too. I could also have actually drawn these two arcs simply as one with one point uh, at this central line. So there are always different ways how you could do it. And sometimes while working, you come up with different better ideas. Um, here, for example, these two lines I would like to be uh, horizontal. And there we are. Okay, good. So this looks pretty good. We also, for the bottle, would like to have an, um, a sleeve that goes over it, for example, to protect, let's say it's glass or to protect the metal for or insulation. So we could draw, for example, a sketch and then try to make this one as close as possible to be parallel to the bottle. Or we can simply select the offset command. And with the offset command, 
I start it in tools and then I drag and I can specify, for example, the distance, let's say two millimeters, tap OK. And then there we see we have an offset. Now here's one thing for those who are new to it. Be careful, like in this case, we have a line here, which we can remove. And here we have a complete long line, same here, which we should remove too, so we don't have double lines there. And then down here, we can draw a line straight down, make sure this is horizontal. We can use the trim command, for example, to cut this small part away. Go back to the top. And then here now we can decide how maybe and where should this end, maybe there. I could also draw just a line like this and maybe move this line around and zoom out a little bit and then try to imagine how high, for example, does actually the sleeve go along the bottle. So I maybe I would like to have also this type of an end. So I set this one maybe to horizontal. Okay, good. I could use the trim command and remove the other lines, but then the lines are gone. And um, if I do not trim them, they're there. And I can always later select these lines and move them around to manipulate them. So I leave them in, good. Okay. and. Maybe let's also put in an opening for the sleeve. So I will start from the center line, drawing a line, press, 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 and terminate it there. Okay. So now I know one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. That means I can do this all at once. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now to close it, I go back to the first. And unfortunately I was too close. So let's repeat this because it actually removed a point. And you see I am pretty loosely actually drawing these uh, or positioning these points because I will afterwards adjust this. Good. So this point, if I select it, you see on the right is a lock icon. On the left, it is a coincident constraint. That actually means that this point always will remain on that center line. Same here. Okay. And now we can use the symmetry again to make sure that everything is symmetrical. I could, for example, also ex uh, revolve or extrude half of an object and then mirror it over and then Boolean union them together. These are a lot of extra steps. This way I can, for example, simply save myself the work. And now we can move these points, play around a little bit, with the shape. Yeah, like this. Maybe here we go a little bit more inwards or to there. So we select a point and then we can drag it. Good. Okay. So we have the sleeve. Let's revolve it. We have the needed half profile. Select next, select the axis line. Okay. Also here, let's make a new group. And then let's add this sleeve to it. And maybe here ideas, that's the, the least group we always need. We just put it to the bottom. Okay, perfect. So now we have the bottle, the cap, and we have the sleeve. You might also notice that actually all these sketches have no rounded corners because at this point now I would like to go into a particular workflow detail. 
there's always the temptation to put a lot of details into the sketch. If you have a blueprint, blueprint, sorry, you need to execute, that might maybe make sense. But if you want to explore ideas, uh, which might require you massaging the sketch a lot, it's always not a good idea to make him too detailed. So for example, these round, uh, these pointy corners here, where I selected the dot, I could, for example, round in the sketch, but I could also add the same detail to the geometry to the 3D object via a fillet. The, the beauty of that is um, I can always remove the fillet on the 3D object in the sketch. It's not necessarily um, that easy. And in a 3D object, I can adjust the fillet easily in the sketch too, but then it makes the sketch more complicated and more fragile. So, and it's also really good practice this way to keep tiny details out of a sketch and really use the sketch for establishing the broader proportions. Okay, so with that said, again, let's um, go back to all our objects. Let's go to uh, translate. I will double tap each face, or I could also go to group and then select the group and then all objects inside that group will be selected. Go next. This time now I turn on copy and I zoom out a little bit and say from here to here, make me a copy. Perfect. So at this copy now, there I can start adding all the details. So I, for example, will hide the sleeve and the cap because I would like to go to this edge and then swipe to the right and let's say 20 millimeters, that looks good. Try to work with, with easy to memorize numbers, maybe five. And maybe down here we do uh, 20 is too big, maybe go with 10, good. Because this should be a body or a vessel where fluid goes in, currently it's a solid part, we now can core it out. That's also again why in the sketch I don't have actually the wall thickness in it because to core this body out, there's a tool for it and it's called shell. So go to tools, shell, select the top face, select next, and let's say two millimeters. And okay, click done. Perfect, you see, very easy. I hope this, for example, quickly explained the advantage of working for basic sketch, making basic 3D objects, and then with the grid active, just make copies and move them even steps uh, along the grid. Because now I could go ahead and um, take a look at the sleeve. And if you did not write down the fillets, if I select this fillet, no, this is 20, this is 10, and this one was 5. Okay, so 5, 20, 10, that's what I have to memorize. Let's go, for example, to here. So I with a finger rotate the view a little bit, select the inside edge, and then let's try to fill it in exactly with the same amount. Now the outside edge cannot be 20. The material thickness is two millimeters. So this one has to be then 22. So this way then your fillets actually grow correctly. This one here will be So um, let me zoom in a little bit more. There, this should be 10. And then the outside edge will be 12. Perfect. So to double check if the sleeve and the bottle are really touching each other correctly. Make sure, for example, in this case, we are in front view. And then lower left, 
uh, sorry, lower right corner, the left icon looks like a cylinder that's cut. Tap it and then you will turn on the cut section along the viewing or drawing plane. And there you see, everything fits perfectly. Great. So let's take a look at the cap. What's missing for the cap is actually the opening for the finger. So let's select these two uh, faces. I will turn the cap actually on as being selected. Still have it invisible and then with the pencil, I will select and then push it out. And it can be pretty big, like this. Perfect. And then with the move command, double tap, I just move it a little bit backwards. And I build it extra big so it nicely sticks out each side. Okay, good. So with one finger double tap on the grid. So I'm back to the, uh, the graphic view because also here again, I would like to make a copy of this one. So double tap it, turn copy on, and then select the grid to move a copy over there. And you see, this way when using the grid, always everything perfectly will line up. It's really, um, very relieving. This part is actually a cutting object and I would like it to be cut out of the cap. So let's go to tools. There is on the left, subtract. Then the menu asks you to select the body to move from. And that is actually our cap, select it with the pencil, uh, hit K, select the tool and then select done and there it is cut out. Perfect. But from <laughs> this view, this looks a little bit wonky. So what we need to do is also add a little bit of detail for a side cut. And maybe I will try to do this one from here and just draw a line down, press and Maybe I make it with two points there. And then this point goes to there. This goes maybe to there. This one I can move down a little bit more. And then I pay attention to how this line actually penetrates this face. And also how big or how small this result later will be. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be too tiny. So let's move this one to there. This is good. Okay, I need to add some connecting lines. I will try to clean this up a little bit there. Okay, good. And let's bring this one to there. Also here, this line to there and there is getting close. We can maybe draw a line, uh, 2.4 millimeters of material thickness. No, that's, that's sufficient. Okay, so also here, let's select all of these faces. And then I go to group, it's still in the cap, so that is good. And uh, we'll do here the same. And let's go to transform or move, double tap. Let's move it down so it goes through it like this. Good. Okay. Currently, as you can see, um, we have that is, is actually that this one lines up with this part and they can't be, they have to be rotated or the cap has to be rotated. So what I will do now is I will go to uh, add, for example, make a construction line, draw a line there, there, and I could also simply with the sketch draw a line uh, and then go to add again, go to construction plane, select the type I would like to have um, through edge at an angle, select this 
construction line, select next. And now you can see I can rotate this plane. This one should be exactly 90 degrees because this will work as a mirroring function. Alternatively, I could also draw a very tiny square and draw a cube up. So then let's go to tools, sorry, to transform, mirror, then double tap the same face. So it selects the whole object. Next, select copy. And then it asks you to select a plane or face. So I could, for example, select this one. Here you see it uses then the orientation of that face to make a copy. And it's important that I selected this face and obviously not this face because that face would not be centered. And then we can select all this and delete it. Okay. But now we have to rotate these two objects too. Let's go back to transform and rotate and double tap on each face to select both objects. Next, then select an axis or an edge. Also here, in this case, now I select the axis line and type in 90 degrees and done. Perfect. There we are. Okay. So double tap on the grid. So we go back to front view. Now we can make a copy. Go to translate, next, copy, and then save from here to there or there. Same distance. Good. Very good. Okay, then let's go to tools and we use the subtract again. This is our target. This is our tools. And there it's cut out. Now there we can see that the way how I designed everything, these lines are a little bit too tiny or too close together. So I will maybe have to move everything up a little bit. So I selected these two objects. Again, go to an orthographic view. I find that very easy. And for example, move them up a little bit, maybe till there, rotate around. Mm, actually, they have to be further down, maybe like this. Yeah, let's try this one. And then Let's do this one more time. So the problem, for example, you start seeing here is sometimes you make sketches and everything looks good and then you make a 3D object and then you see there are problems in your design. And that is one of the main reasons why I would never do this type of final modeling on only one and the final object, but which is why I always work with copies and then move them to the side and then you continue adding copy uh, details to it. So in case I discover a problem, I always have the ability to, to go backwards and fix them. It's all about minimizing uh, redundant work. Okay, good. Let's take a look at the sleeve. So the sleeve does not have yet an opening. So select these two faces. You see I selected the sleeve group. Extrude this one out and then move, double tap and move this one down. Okay. And I could also use, for example, the move command, turn on copy, move this over and then type in 100. That for example works the same. And let's go to tools, subtract this minus this one, done. And let's take a look at the cap and the bottle. Okay. So far, not too bad. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to see individual objects. So maybe at this point it might make sense to go to tools and color 
maybe I like this green, double tap a face so it selects the whole object. Okay, uh, we could actually also go tools, color, and on the right side, you see there's a transparency slider. On the left side here, we can work with the amount of color. So I make this white. And maybe make this glass slightly transparent. Like this. Okay, good. And this way, it's maybe a little bit easier to see the individual objects. Okay. So we are right now at 48 minutes. Um, let me quickly run you through how to create the, the fillets. Uh, sorry, the threading is actually pretty easy too. Also here again, I will create a new group. Set this to threading. Turn actually everything off, but I have my threading still selected in the group. And let's maybe do a basic, simple threading. Make sure grid is turned on. The grid really will be very helpful here. And there, I just draw a line from there to there, a line from there to there. So this is 1.5 millimeters. This is like 0.5. And now to draw the opposite threading, I'm just counting the, the grids basically. And there we have it. That's basically the, the initial first set for the threading. So 1.5 is the height. Let's go to tools and revolve because that's the tool we use to make the threading. So this face, we will spin around this edge, but now we have to create um, kind of like a turn. And on the left side, you see height. If I select it and type in maybe three and goes up, good. Um, let's say 720 for two turns. No, it doesn't work because it would self-intersect. What happens if we set this to six and then 720? Yeah, and there we are. Now we have two turns and we have the correct amount of distance also. So 720 and six for height, that is what I need to repeat with the next, this one. And then there, uh, six and then 720, good, and done. Okay. I find actually to create threading this way to be very easy. Um, I make just two turns because if I then need more, I simply copy and paste it instead of trying to calculate the amount of rotation and the amount of height. So to make copies, I can go to transform, translate, double click, double click, next copy. And then I need to figure out from where to where do I want to do the alignment. So let's say this point to this point. So lower point to lower point. Click done. And there we are. Okay. And actually in our case, the threading fits in pretty good. It's not too big. The last thing basically now would be to create a rotation of the threading faces. So I will go to sketch and turn this one off for the moment. This will be easier. And this is, for example, here, the start phase. So let's go to move and rotate and select this one next then select this axis next and type in 45. so I, my hand hit the uh, the screen and i have to change the orient no this is actually correct so never mind no this sorry my, i got confused for a second i'm sorry for it the wider face or length has to be at the 
vessel face and then the smaller one that's actually the threading that goes inwards. Okay, so that means with the other one, we can repeat this one. So there, select this line and this might be 45, yeah, okay, good. So it's a very simple way to create for prototyping purpose your threading. So I create a little bit of a gap in between because I have to accommodate also for 3D printing inaccuracies or material shrinkage. And then later I could refine actually the threading. And if you make it too tight, also you might actually jam the threading. So that's not too good. You also don't want to break your prototype. Awesome. So let's go to this view. Let's zoom out a little bit and I will go to front there. Okay. And I will make, um, I will hide actually the cap and I will make a new group folder. For example, you could rename this one just as a tip after you build it, threading cap. And then there, for example, you could actually add, for example, the cap threading to it. Another one we could, for example, rename threading bottle. But this is all up to you how you want to utilize those. I would like to move actually these two parts over. So I go translate and then double tap, double tap, double tap, double tap. Okay, next and copy. And from there to there, there we are. Okay. Good. I will show this cap and then I go back to translate and make one more copy. And you will see soon why I'm actually doing this. Okay. And this one I will call maybe final. And then I also have to move the threading over. So I make one copy of the threading to translate. And oh, maybe I did not make a correct copy, hold on. Um, I will make a copy from this side. And here again, it's maybe good that I made the small mistake because it will show you how actually by working with the grid, you can so perfectly reposition objects. It really doesn't matter. So from there, now to this grid, make me a copy. There it is. So, and then this actually, I will go to tools and union and say you and you and you are all together. And I just have to add the correct material to them. And for example, into this final, I can actually put this part. So if I now take a look at the sleeve, the one I leave maybe for the moment, um, and here I can select this edge. And now we can, for example, go into details. So like rounding, see the different steps I'm using. And then we maybe add just a tiny edge break. And you notice actually, I only selected two edges, not the complete profile. And that does it all for you. That's all I need. And here this ring and I do a detail there, perfect. And then this actually goes into the final one too. Okay. 
And now it's time to work on the cap. So, here I have to make one more copy. And there. And then we just join actually this together. Also here, zoom in. Union, you, you, and you together. There we are. And because this is the final cap, also here again, now I can do a little bit of detail exploration. So maybe this edge and this edge now I can round a little bit, maybe like this to make this nicer for the finger. Also this edge, I would like to round and pay attention to the sequence uh, I use. So I rounded these edges first and now I can actually round these edges. And also here, tiny, tiny gap. Maybe one millimeter is actually not too bad. Okay, and let's add this one to it too. And there is our water bottle. So I hope that this process basically explained the, the steps I use for designing an object pretty well with creating first a basic sketch, then making basic 3D objects, making adjustments of the sketch. And then once you decided onto something, even here you make copies, use the grid to move them to the right or the left. So then if you have to align objects, they always perfectly match up. And that's it.